the title of my message is The Appointed Feasts of the Lord. Okay, key verse is verse 2. Let's read this key verse together, please. Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Leviticus chapter 25. It's truly a revelatory chapter. <coughs> revelatory chapter with implication of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, coming of the Holy Spirit, and Christ's returning in his kingdom. All these are hidden in Jewish yearly feasts in this one chapter. We see the whole picture of God's redemptive history in this passage. It's likely that entire history of God is in his hand. Now, in chapter 23, verse 1 and 2, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed feasts. The appointed feasts of the Lord which are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. <clears throat> Here, the word, my appointed feasts. The appointed feasts of the Lord, the Lord's appointed feasts, are written five times. These feasts are different from human feasts. The celebration on a human feast is to remember a certain event and keep the precious lesson. But the feasts of the Lord, the feasts originated from God, the Lord God, is furthermore to anticipate the future events to be fulfilled till the end of human history. From our standing point, some events were fulfilled. Certain events were fulfilled, the rest will be fulfilled in the plan of God. At, their, at the appointed times. More, precise, more precisely, we can say that these feasts are Jesus' feasts. <coughs> now in verse 3, there are six days when you may work, but so the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, is a Sabbath to the Lord. The word Sabbath is always the word Sabbath is often used with the word rest. Holy or sacred holy or sacred. The seventh day, seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of complete solemn rest, a day of sacred assembly, a Sabbath to the Lord. In chapter 25, you see the word Seventh year. So, seventh day can be a seventh, or seventh year is a seventh. And remember the fourth of Ten Commandments. It says, remember the seventh day by keeping it holy. And observe the seventh day by keeping it holy. Here, the author, before mentioning the feasts, he says of the Sabbath day first. Why? It's because keeping the seventh day as a Sabbath is the basic speed of the feasts. As for us, to keep the Lord's day, Sunday, as a day of worship, part of worship. We cannot stress too much the importance of our worship on each Sunday. It turns how each one worship God on Lord's Day has tremendous impact upon his or her life, Christian life. It's the day of renewing our spirit, renewing our hearts, having rest in our souls through wholehearted worship in spirit and truth. Whatever happens, worship God wholeheartedly, week by week. Again, Sabbath day spirit is 
the space spin of the whole fist. <coughs> then he says, these are the laws of pointed fists. The sacred assemblies you have to proclaim at their proper times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. Can you see? First feast, first feast is Lord's Feast. The description of the Lord's Feast is just one verse. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the, first, on the 14th day of the first month. Here we see that God changed the calendar they have been using into His calendar. When you give to Exodus chapter 12, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. This month is the very month, first month, signifies the formation of the nation Israel, <coughs> coming out of the slavery of, in Egypt with God's power. That's the first month. Yet there are Advice for the Jews, civil calendar, religious calendar. This month, seventh month become the first month, called Aviv, after the exile, coming from the exile, Isan. First month. Mm. And on that day, on that month, at that, in that month, on the tenth day, each family is to keep a lamb. A year old male without defect. On the tenth day, keep the lamb until the fourteenth day. And then at the twilight of the fourteenth day, that just before the fifteenth day, they slaughter the lamb. As for this, a day starts from evening to evening. At the twilight of the fourteenth day, they slaughter the lamb. And then put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts, top and sides. And the angel of death passed over the house that had blood sign while killing all the Egyptians, firstborn sons of Egyptians. This is the Lord's Passover. And the Lord's Passover points to Jesus, the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, Pastor Paul, said in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 7, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Clearly said, Christ, our Passover lamb. Now, Pastor Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, You are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, he was revealed in these last times for your sake. Passover lamb, Christ. Always, the Passover falls, Passover falls on the 14th day of Nisan. Always, Friday before the Sabbath. Always. <clears throat> and God's writers clearly specify that Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, it was three in the afternoon, 14th day of Nisan, just before the Sabbath. It's amazing accuracy. On that day to the clock. It is. His death. This day is the most important single day in human history. The day of God's son being killed, sacrificed for the sin of Adam's race. Jesus' death on the cross is the foundation of our faith and our life in Christ the foundation of Christian church. As it starts in Leviticus, Leviticus starts with the five offerings. The burnt offering, the grain offering, the, flesh of, the fellowship offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. Mm. Yes. So these offerings point to again Christ's sacrifice. And then as you studied, the core of holy life is the atonement of sin. On the day of atonement, the blood of the bull was sprinkled 
on the ottoman kaaba, mercy seat, the deepest part of the temple in the most holy place, and the scapegoat was sent to a desert, solitary place, carrying the sin of these people, scapegoat. And clearly said, it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So, can you imagine the amount, the amount of the blood of countless animals that, were having, that have been killed for around 1,500 years? Millions of animals were slaughtered, blood was shed. The flood of the blood points to the blood of Christ that is sufficient and pure enough to wash away all our sins and bring us near to God, in the presence of God. That's why the author of Hebrews says, since we have confidence, since we have confidence, then it's the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, open the us to the curtain, that is his body. Since we have great priest of the house of God, <coughs> let's draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Have our hearts sprinkled. Amen. That blood, sufficient enough, pure enough to wash up all our sins, bring us to the presence of God. Let's draw near to God, nearer, nearer in this grace. Amen. This is the Lord's Passover. Comes first. Impo you know, importance of first. And then it says, on the 15th day of the 10th month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred hold a, an assembly and do no regular work. And for seven days, present an offering based the Lord by fire. And on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no, no regular work. This is, yes. Okay, this time 15th. And, yes, one week. We remember at the Lord's table, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body. Take and eat, this is my body. Jesus' body would be buried under the ground for three days. So, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they eat the bread without yeast, refers to Jesus' burial. According to Josephus, the Jewish historian, the Jews kept the Passover by burying the bread, unleavened bread, under the ground for three days and eating it. The meaning of burial is that our sinful old self is buried. Our old self being buried in this anticipation of rising with Jesus. And then it says, Speak to Israelites, and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, you reap its harvest. Bring to the priest a sheep of the first grain you harvest. First grain. He is to wave the sheep before the Lord, so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheep, priest waves and offer up waves. This is 16th day of the first month. And this is the day of the first fruits. 16th day, before the Sabbath, or after the Sabbath. And he says, wave is written three times, <coughs> waving, sureness, and participation. And we know that on Sunday, Jesus rose again from the dead. Sixteenth day of Nisan, he rose again from the dead. The Apostle Paul said, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus is the resurrection, first fruits of the resurrection. So, the feast of first fruits refers to Jesus' resurrection. It's the greatest event, single greatest event in human history, as victory over death. And with the resurrection, Christianity stands for. 
and it opens the door to the eternal kingdom of God, which is our living hope. Christian life is dying with Jesus and being buried, and uh, Christian life is to dying with Jesus, being buried, and rising with Jesus. Paul said, I die every day. You know, no death, no resurrection. From time to time, our life situation is like a dead end situation, on the contrary to our expectation of favorable ones. Becomes dead end situation. Hot, become dark and depressed. Time and again, that becomes our life situation. But God wants us to rise again and challenge any and every situation and live with resurrection faith day by day. With that faith, we may really prepare our club day. Yes, every year we do, but this year we may see some difference. Challenge again with resurrection faith. And we see first year students and other students come to our group Bible study. Yes, club day, August 31st, 1 through 4, 3 hours. And our club uh, Bible study next following week, September 4th. We may see students, first year students, others come to the table for group Bible study, which is led by Jenny. <coughs> Amen. With resurrection phrase, challenge again. Mm. Their dark and deep frustration stand again. You also see offering first fruits means expression of loving God, giving thanks to Him and faith in Him. Interestingly, offering the first fruits, offering the first fruits is related to resurrection. This is a spiritual feast, spiritual secret that when you offer first fruits to God in terms of time, materials, and everything. Our life can be victorious and abundant in God's provision. Last Friday, I really thanked God for Ian's testimony. Ian is the one who talks about soccer and plays soccer and watches soccer. And he's a soccer man. But he only really decides to offer the first time, 5 o'clock in the morning, offer the first time to God. Soccer man is becoming Bible man. Loving the Bible out of love for Jesus. In that, his life can be victorious and abundant. It's as Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Amen. Hmm. What a wonderful thing it is. Sacrament becomes Bible man. Wonderful Bible teacher. Servant of God's word. Resurrection faith. Stand again and again. Any depressed situation. And then he says, From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the ship of the wave offering, count of seven full weeks. Count of fifth days of the day after the seventh Sabbath. And then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour, baked with yeast as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Here, it was count from first month of sixteenth day, fifth, fifth days, then sixth of a third month. Seven. And here you see the new grain. This new grain is grain of wheat, while the at the feast of first fruits, the first grain is a barley. This is a new grain of wheat and first fruits also. And this new grain is followed by four months of summer harvest. And the expression, see, baked with yeast this time. You can bake, you can bake the bread with yeast in the fire. And fellowship offering is made along with the burnt offering and grain offering and sin offering. So these two things can signify the fellowship between the Jews and Gentiles in the church. See, what happened in this story is that, see again, yes, Paul said, this mystery is that through the gospel, Gentiles are heirs together with Israel member, Israel. Members together of one body and shares together 
in the promise in Christ Jesus. Gentiles and Jews. Because historically what happened here, after Jesus' resurrection, few days are counted, and on that day, we call it Pentecost. Pentecost means few days. On that day, Holy Spirit was poured out on the people, and church began. And see, the fellowship of Jews and Gentiles in the church, Paul said about its mystery. And then as there was a few four months of harvest, a summer harvest, there will be spiritual harvest until it just comes again. That's it signifies. It's written, see, between the description of the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Trumpets later on. There are there is a description in verse 22. Here, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edge of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and alien, and I am the Lord your God. Once Jesus said, Israelites are like children who sit on the table, they eat the bread on the table, but Gentiles, they eat the crumbs of the bread they are pulling from the table. But this harvest, compassionate of the Gentiles. That's why Jesus said before his ascension, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. As we hold on to this promise again and again, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. We are living in this era, era of spiritual harvest for the Gentiles before our Lord Jesus comes again. Promise of the Holy Spirit. We cannot forget also what Peter said in Acts chapter 2. In those days, the seventeen note says, In those days, I proud my spirit on all people. Your son and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And even on my servants, both men and women, I proud my spirit and they prophesy. Speaking the word of God. Once again, as you see this vision, the last days God says, I proud my spirit on all people, you and me, all the more. We cannot forget what God said in Amos. In the days are coming when I send a famine, not famine of food or thirst for water, but famine of hearing the word of the Lord. When you stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, Lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of the thirst. May we believe this. Believe this. And prepare ourselves to be ready to teach the very words of God for young people who have a great hunger and thirst for the word of God. Amen. And let's read this verse together. Yeah, please. Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, we are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with a trumpet blast. Do no regular work, but present an offering with the Lord by fire. First day of seventh month. Jewish people called it Yoshi Hasana. And this uh, Feast of Trumpets refers to Jesus coming again. Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of archangels, the trumpet call of God, and the dead will, in Christ will rise first. We who are living and left will be caught up with them together in the clouds to meet the Lord again. What an event it will be. Mr. Lord in the air. And also, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We'll all sleep. We'll all be changed. In the flesh and twinkle of an eye, the last trumpet, trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and will be changed. But the glorious hope we have, we will keep this hope in our hearts. Amen. And then we read the next one. Let's read together, yeah, please. The tenth day of this month, seventh month, is the day of atonement, or the sacred assembly, and deny yourselves. Afflict yourselves. 
This is 10th day of atonement. According to, to Daniel and Revelation, there will be seven years of seven years of tribulation until the end of the age. Seven years of tri tribulation. And there will be national wise repentance among the Jews. And Zechariah says here, and you see young people, Zechariah says, and I will proud on the house of David and inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They look on me, the one they have pierced, and they mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him, as one grieves on a firstborn son. And chapter 13 it says, and then it says continually, on that day the weeping in Jerusalem will be great. The land will mourn. And in 13, on that day a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. And when you read further, one third of the Jews will be saved. Paul also said this, Gentile believers, I want you, do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, or the remnant will be saved. The day of atonement, referring to the day of atonement. Then, the last one, let's read it together. 34. Say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Lord's feast of a tabernacle begins. It lasts for seven days. Yes. 15th day. And it lasts seven days. And this is a really day of celebration. And this was the seventh month, first month in civic calendar. Bringing you, you know. And it's really a day of celebration and rejoicing. And they commemorated their life in the desert, living in the bush. And this Feast of Tabernacle refers to Christ's kingdom. It is coming with the holy angels and the saints caught up together to meet in the Lord, come down together. Christ kingdom coming. Now coming to Revelation, he reign on earth for a thousand years. And the kingdom of Christ will be ushered into the eternal kingdom of God, a new Jerusalem, a new heaven and new earth. Kingdoms of the world will perish, but the kingdom of Christ will forever. As Revelation 11, 15 says, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever. Amen. Christ's kingdom will forever is coming. Our hope. We start that there are man's calendar and God's calendar. In God's calendar, we see amazing management of God. All the histories of God are written there, and His calendar becomes His people's calendar. In the Greek, time has two words. One is chronos, chronological time, chronological time. And kairos, time of occasion. And Paul's occasion opportunity. Paul said in Philippians chapter, Ephesians 5, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Make every opportunity, making the most Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Making the most of every opportunity is other translations. Making the best use of time. Making the most of time. This time is kindness. May help us to live according to God's calendar, His time schedule, with a sense of time, with the foundation of Christ's death and resurrection. In the leading and power of the Holy Spirit for the proclamation of the gospel, the glorious hope of Christ returning and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for revealing wonderful words of God within Leviticus chapter 25. Father, what a revelatory description, Christ's death, burial, resurrection, coming with the Holy Spirit fulfilled and Spirit's harvest is going on 
of the Jesu come again. The kingdom will be on earth forever, getting into the eternal kingdom of God. Father, will help us to really have time sense. But in God's time schedule, as your people, have deeper faith in Christ's death and resurrection, power of the Spirit is coming again. His kingdom, day by day, worshiping you wholeheartedly each Sunday, whatever happens. Thank you for your words. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.